Good. I remember Watergate more than I remember the Pentagon Papers, but the script really illuminated for me what the Pentagon Papers were really all about. The Pentagon Papers was a critical study of why we were involved in the war in Vietnam and sort of showed that the war never had to be fought, that we were only in the war to save face because we didn't want to be humiliated. No president wanted the war to end in defeat on their watch. The most highly classified documents of the war. The Times says 7,000 pages detailing how the White House has been lying about the Vietnam War for 30 years. And that was all in the papers. And that's why Daniel Ellsberg stole the papers and got it to the New York Times and then to the Washington Post. He was trying to bring the war to an end. And I thought that was a very, very compelling reason to start to get into this, involved in this project. The fastest movie I've ever made. I thought we had an audience waiting to receive and hear this story. And I also felt we had an angry audience as I've been angry and frustrated. And we had an audience that needed to give some vent to their own frustrations. And I thought this movie could release some of that frustration. I was more creative because I had less time to be creative. And sometimes that's a good thing for a filmmaker. No one event in, in history stands alone. It's almost like a chain reaction. The resignation of Richard Nixon as the president, that only happened because the pre Pentagon Papers gave credibility to the Washington Post who published those papers. They might not have broken the Watergate story and Nixon might not have been impeached, or threatened to impeach and then resign. I shall resign the presidency effective at noon tomorrow. I thought that, at least in my country, people were hearing with new ears. They were witnessing uh, brutal attacks by this administration on the print media, on the cable industry, on CNN, on MSNBC. Category you are fake news. On anybody that didn't agree with this particular administration. All of these stories, these true stories, were being labeled fake. So there was a culture of confusion being engineered by this White House. So people really would not understand what to believe or who to believe. That's worse than what happened in 1971 with Richard Nixon trying to attack the papers through legal measures. It's a lot messier today. In the election, there were, there were pop-up news sources. Just suddenly, they weren't there on Monday and they suddenly appeared on Tuesday. They were only there for the sole purpose of bringing down the candidate Hillary Clinton or bringing down the candidate Bernie Sanders or bringing down any candidate that could stand in the way of the candidate that they were choosing, which was the candidate that became, eventually became the president. It's not the fake outlets that are being attacked and being labeled fake news. It's legitimate, certified outlets that are being attacked if what they're printing is not being agreed with by the administration. Well, she was a woman who was dominated by a world of men in, in positions of power and authority, and yet she had the power and she had the authority, but she was reluctant to exercise it because she had been so proselytized by her father, by her husband, by just the men in the world that she lived in. She had a tough time exercising her right to speak out and to command her own board of directors to listen to her. People are concerned about having a woman in charge of the paper, that she doesn't have the resolve to make the tough choices. And our whole story is about this one woman who finds her voice and how it changed everything for other women as well once she did. When I'm confident and I'm balanced, I don't do my best work. I do my best work when I'm a little, little more insecure because I then fight for balance. In fighting for balance, I get a lot of great ideas. If I make a sequel to Jurassic Park or Indiana Jones, I'm very confident that there's gonna be an audience for those movies. I don't get as good ideas as when I'm doing something that I have, I have never done anything like that particular film before. Yes, yes, I, I think certainly it's about more recent history. Lincoln took place you know, a long time ago, and Amistad took place even further back through history than that. This is the, maybe the most relevant political movie I've ever attempted to, to make. <laughs>